This here is an old IBM ThinkPad that I've owned for years. It's an um, i-series ThinkPad from the 90s. And I haven't booted this up in, uh, in a very long time, actually. But I want to try something with this. I want to, well, first see if it still works. And if it does, um, I want to upgrade this. Right now, it has a SD card as a boot media. And let's see if it still boots. That's something. Let's actually move it a little closer. Yep, that's looking good. Now, if I may say, this is probably the worst screen in the world. It's definitely not the prettiest. <laughs> um, old 800 by 600 display, you know, really, really old school stuff. And of course, the CMOS is dead. Might actually look into replacing this. I'm not sure if I do it. Anyway, let's see if this thing still boots up. Oh yeah, look at that. Ready for service once again. <laughs> you just can't kill those old things. IBM ThinkPads, you just can't kill them. There we go. It's booting up Windows 2000 as I left it off. Really cool, just like I left it. <laughs> now, unfortunately, ever since I put it into storage, it suffered here this crack, which I think is just from, you know, wear and tear. It's an old laptop after all. I mean, God, this thing is, how old is it? Really old, I think it's built in 2000, 1999, who knows? So what, what I'm curious about is if we can adapt this thing to modern boot media standards. So here is an SSD, a MSATA SSD to be exact, 32 gigabytes on a IDE adapter because this uses an IDE interface and therefore I need that. Now I have actually two of these things because I know that old computers can be finicky with adapters and, and, and drives and it's just not guaranteed that it will work. So I have here those two. One is a 64 gigabyte and one is a 32, which is a big, big upgrade over what this has right now. If I remember correctly, it has a four gigabyte SD card as a boot drive. Yeah, four gigabyte, that's really, that's like nothing. But for you know, for for the standards from this laptop, it was it was it was decent. I think it was more than average, I suppose. It has some cool software on here. Let's just quickly jump into here. Now this display, as I said, is is it's just horrendous. Um, that wasn't a good display for, for even for the time. Um, this was probably more a lower end uh, sort of thing. But here it is, Celeron has also a lower end CPU. And then we have, let's see what we have. How many RAM, 192 megabytes. It's, it's basically more than enough to run Windows 98 or 2000 or, you know, just a period of correct operating system. I even had a one point running XP on this, which it worked okay, but, um, not on the, SSD, uh, on the SD though, uh, it was on the hard drive. Here, SSD, you could probably get by with XP pretty fast, but I'm not gonna put XP on here. I'm probably gonna stick with Windows 2000. The best thing would be to just probably kind of clone it, but I don't know, that's probably not gonna work, at least not how I like it to be. Um, the, the smartest thing to avoid just a lot of hassle is I think just, um, you know, move over to programs and whatnot and, and, and just clearly, uh, freshly reinstall windows 2000. What I'm really curious is if I can put this thing in the, in this thing in and the computer can make sense of it. That's what I'm a bit worried about that the computer just says, what the hell is this? So that's why I have two. We get, um, 
we get two chances of it working and if one doesn't work i'll try the other and if none work i'll try to swap out um, the drives to one another and yeah hope that uh, one of those possibilities work because as cool as sd cards are they're not they're not the go-to choice they're not, they were never made to be a boot media and, and written and you know they were never uh, designed to cope with them that many read and write processes so it, they will die eventually if you use them a lot uh, this hasn't been used much you probably will keep going the way it is for long but i'm willing to to upgrade it to an ssd so i'm glad it still works i can shove the sd back anytime and it will work so that's also nice to see but now let's shut this down and uh, get it open and put in that adapter and if it all works I'll look for my Windows 2000 disk and we'll install Windows 2000. So I glued over here this, this bracket because that plastic tab, which should, should latch into place, unfortunately snapped off from, you know, all the years. And so I have to do it this way. I hope we can make it out. There is an adapter with an SD card. I have no idea how I'll retrieve it. Hmm, probably with some pliers. There we go. Needed a bit of persuasion, but here it is. I'm glad it actually stayed put so well. I used this adapter, as you see. Um, if it came to this, it, it will probably be a pain to put this back as well. But, um, yeah. We'll just not worry about that. Which one will we give a try first? I will give a try the 32 gig version. And I have here some screws, um, which I will fasten if I know it works. Or maybe it's smart to fasten them right now. You know what, it's not that much of a work, so I'll do it now. Okay, here we are. Let's, let's just see if that will work. Oh, I'm just seeing there's something up with the connector. That's what I thought when I pulled it out as well. I need that. Ugh. That thing on top there. Man, that's, that was stuck on pretty well. This thing. It's not straight, is it? It's blocked here a little bit. So it will be worse regardless. If not, I'll just file off some of this plastic and it will clear it. But uh, yeah, I'll we'll just try it this way. It will probably work. So I'm just gonna shove that in. And there we go. Put it into place and now <laughs> we boot it up and see if it will work. This hinge crack here has just gotten worse while operating it. Let's see what it'll do. Hopefully it doesn't take forever to get into the to the bias. It sometimes does that with a dead CMOS. Just hope it doesn't do it now. Okay. Hard disk drive. Holy crap. It it recognized it. Yes! Yes! <laughs> that is very good. It's very good indeed. So man, I'm glad that worked first try. Sweet, now let's let me get the Windows 2000 disk. So here I have a Windows 2000 CD. CD because this thing I don't think it has a DVD ROM. It has only CD-ROM, as you see, CD-ROM attached. So first, let's hope this old clunker of a drive still works. It ejects, that's good, but will it write, read the disk? And second, um, I hope that Windows 2000 doesn't freak out when it sees the SSD. Because it's good that the IBM BIOS recognizes it, but Windows? I don't know, it's another story, I think. 
Let's hope that will work. All right. Let's just um, let's just reboot it. Have you ever installed Windows 2000 on an SSD on a, on a ThinkPad from the 90s? I don't think you have. So let's see if that will work. All right. Temporary boot disk. CD-ROM. Come on. Read it. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Yes! Man, this computer keeps on giving. Alright, that's looking very promising so far. But I'm still gonna be curious if uh, Windows 2000 likes this, this SSD. But, yeah, we'll stay positive. Here, by the way, is another possibility on older computers. You can put a compact flash card in it as well, as you see, use an adapter like that to IDE, and you have another uh, solid state media. But since, you know, nowadays, M SATA SSDs, they really don't cost much, especially the lower volume ones, it's probably smarter to do it like this. Just um, forget this. That was cool a couple of years ago, but it's not the way to go. It's kind of a janky setup, so should actually do it like this, if it works, you know, if, big if. Now, if this all goes well, and we have a working Windows 2000, that's already a big win, and if that is all done, I'm trying to just connect this with a USB card reader and move over the programs, <laughs> which will be painfully slow, this only has a USB, like, one, USB one interface. And we are on to the next win, as you see, yes! It recognized it. How awesome is that? Awesome. So we're gonna format that. Now we have unpartitioned space, very good. And now we're gonna just, uh, you know, format it using NTFS, yes. And that's gonna take long on Windows 2000, oh my god. But that's looking very, very promising, so. As I said, this, this will probably take a while because those formatting uh, stages on those old windows, they always take very long for some reason. I don't know why it does it so slow, but yeah, well, it's not too bad. It's actually pretty fast. Oh my God, that's way faster than I ever thaw, thought. But yeah, it's an SSD after all. So maybe the SSD is, is gonna be a bit quicker. And I know it's going to come up too, uh, people are probably going to say, but you know, those old windows are going to wear out the SSD so fast. And yeah, guys, it's not like this gets used as a daily work machine anymore. So it's it's going to be fine for the foreseeable future for sure. So yeah, <laughs> and it's going to outlast the SD card. Like, I don't know how many times, 500 times, probably longer. So it's all good. It's all good. Oh no, it just shut down in the middle of a process and didn't turn back on. I don't know what that was. What the hell? Let's plug it back in. I don't know what the C was about or... That's a C, isn't it? I don't know why this was lighting up. Um, but what concerns me is the reason why it shut down in the first place. Like, uh... What made it do that? Because I don't think it was done with the process or whatever it was doing at the time. I think it was copying files or something. Uh, let's just hope it continues. And it just didn't reboot for whatever reason itself. Yeah, we already know that. Man, I really should get that CMOS fix, shouldn't I? We're not gonna boot from CD. Just gonna try to wing it. It's starting up Windows. Oh, wow, that was fast. No oh, blue screen. This is actually booting from the SSD right now. How freaking cool is that? Windows 2000 setup is booting off the SSD. Sweet, sweet. So it was just the faulty reboot. Again, I got a feeling it's got to do with this, with the with the CMOS that is not not working anymore so maybe that caused the like bias to be confused what it should do when rebooting i don't know but what i know is that we have so far yes a windows 2000 setup which is 
uh, booting from the SSD on a ThinkPad from the 90s. That is really cool in itself. So it has been installing just fine for a couple of minutes. I'm gonna leave it alone now and hope that it will just go through with the install, show no blue screens or other issues. And yeah, then uh, we'll be back. Now I have confidence because this machine was made for Windows 2000, so I don't know why it shouldn't, but you never know. And here we are, guys. Yes, this ThinkPad, in fact, installed Windows 2000 Service Pack 4 with no problems whatsoever on the SSD. And it's already a day later because it installed long into the night and I couldn't be bothered to finish the video in the night. Also because it was needing drivers. It needed, surprisingly, only three drivers. So it needed the video driver, the driver for the audio interface, power management, and modem. So it was actually four drivers then. Okay, never mind. So it needed four drivers, which could be found on a website rather easily, not on the official Lenovo website anymore, but uh, on some other website where they have all the drivers for those old ThinkPads, which is very convenient. And after installed all the drivers, this thing was ready to go, and I'm here, as you see, in the process of copying over the files. And yes, even my relatively new card reader works fine on Windows 2000, imagine that. So I just plugged it in, and it recognized it. So. I am in the process of moving over the programs and uh, unfortunately OpenOffice, as you will see later, didn't work. It just gave me a couple of errors, but it's not that interesting anyway, it just, yeah. But the computer is fully working, it is faster than ever with the SSD, it's really noticeably faster and you do notice it also sometimes the SD card locked up when you copied over some files just again because it's not really meant to be used as a hard drive or as a as a uh, a boot drive it's it's only a storage media so it, it's, it was never supposed to do what i asked from it so the ssd definitely definitely is an upgrade and as i already said uh, it is so affordable nowadays to get a cheap adapter for a couple of bucks and then a cheap MSATA SSD for a couple of bucks and you you're just so much better off than an old spinning hard drive you know speed noise and reliability is just so much better so it's a great way to keep those old um, computers up and running in today's age which are mostly used by enthusiasts who maybe want to play some old games or run some old software or just want to preserve it not necessarily use it for anything, but it's always nice to have a a working computer. And the SSD is definitely a great idea. Like, I didn't expect that this goes so smooth. I really thought we would run into issues. Mainly, I was concerned about it recognizing it. Like, the, just the, the IBM bias recognizing the adapter. Because sometimes that's... Not always guaranteed. So sometimes it works, sometimes not. Sometimes at certain adapters don't work. It is a bit of a pain. And I've been through all of this, believe me. So, yeah. Uh, I'm glad I did this. Uh, the computer works very fast and it's a great upgrade. I can only recommend it. Very happy I did it. And you should do it as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you later.